Hi, this is Laura at Oakland, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to add sliders uh, to the carousel, images to your carousel. So as you can see here is a carousel, yours may auto-rotate or not, depending on your site. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to move the recording window up. Now one thing we should note before we get started, of course you probably already know this if you had a carousel in your Drupal 7 site, uh, is that uh, first of all in Drupal 7 these weren't called sliders, they were called Nevo sliders. Now they're simply called sliders, but the idea is the same. Also, uh, as you probably already know, uh, you have to create the image for the slider outside of the website. You can't create graphics uh, inside of your, your web content management system. Uh, so whatever software you're using, whether that's PaintShop Pro or Photoshop or Canva, uh, whatever it is, uh, you need to create your images in one of three different formats. You need to create them either as GIFs, as JPEGs, or as PNGs. Those, those, those are all uh, standard web image formats. So one of those three. So that has not changed. Uh, let's go ahead and look at how to create one. We're going to go to content, add content, and go to slider. Instead of Nevo slider, they're now just called sliders. Some of these fields you won't need here. So for example, book outline, you're probably never going to put a slider into uh, a book. Uh, URL alias, probably not going to give a special URL to a uh, carousel slider image. But let's talk about the required fields over here on the left, starting with title. Uh, this is simply visible to you. So you can call it whatever you'd like. It just helps you distinguish between uh, the different sliders that you have. I'm going to call this text slider. The link can be an internal link or an external link. I want to show you what happens when you have an internal link. So for example, let's say I wanted to link this uh, to an event on our calendar here. Um, and I don't know the URL directly, but I, because this is an autofill field, uh, it will start guessing and you can tell it's an autofill field because it has that little circle, gray circle over on the right hand side. So I'm going to start typing what I know is the name, all about, yep, and there it is, all about trains. I'm going to select that and then that will figure out uh, the internal link since it, it was able to pull it up from its autofill list. Now what about an external link? So let's say I wanted to link this to the Oakland website. I can just start typing that URL. That's fine, oakland.ohio.gov. Of course autofill isn't going to find anything. That's okay. It's not an internal link. It's external. And you can use any external link you would use anywhere else. So you could link to, for example, a database or a digital service or website. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm going to go ahead and put all about trains back in, all about trains, there we go. So the last field that's required here uh, is image, and you'll notice there's also a link to the IMCE file browser, so if your image happens to be in your uh, f file library, you can grab it from there, but most of the time when you're creating new sliders, you're probably going to upload a new one, uh, and in ca this case that's what I'm going to do, so I'm going to go ahead and browse. I'm going to grab the image called test slider. Notice alternative text is now required. If you weren't using it before, you certainly will be now. Uh, I'm going to just put in the text on the, on the slide, which is test slider. And actually, you know what? You can also remove it. So if I look at this and go, oh, I grabbed the wrong image, just click remove, and it's gone. Now, one thing that's different here, uh, probably for most of you, is that in the past, sliders had a specified size that you were given. Uh, they had a height, and a, a height and a width that were required. This is a little different in Drupal 8. Here you don't have a required height and width, you have a required minimum. So your images, as you can see down here, it says images must be larger than 925 by 300 pixels. You can create images at 925 by 300. In fact, that's kind of an easy number to remember, so I encourage you to use that. Uh, remember, you need to create all of your sliders at the same size. They do need to be consistent, okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and browse and grab that image again. There we go. I'm going to put the alternative text back in. Uh, and you'll see, too, that you have the option, just like you've always had, by default, sliders are published, but you can unpublish them as well simply by unchecking this box. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. 
and there's our test slider right here. Okay, so now let's go back to our home page. And we may say, okay, well, where is our new slider? So your slider holds a maximum of five slides. And there's two, three, four, five. So if we go back to the beginning, we're not going to see our slider, but that's not actually why you don't see it, because even if there were, say, only three images in this carousel, uh, your new one, in my case, the test slider would still not be here. Not only does it only hold a maximum of five, many of you already know that's the um, current data on usability for carousels, which is why it's set to that number, um, but also we've only done step one of two steps. We created the image, but we actually have to put it in a queue that the carousel script pulls from. So uh, we're going to go up to structure, and you should have an option there called edit queue sliders. You're probably already familiar with edit queue front page. In this case, we're going to edit queue sliders. Let me shift my window a little bit. Okay, it doesn't quite extend to see everything, um, but most of what you're going to need. So here are the five that are currently in the, um, in the, in the carousel. And notice that you can drag and drop these. So I can move lynda.com, for example, up to the third position. Um, but whatever changes you're making, once you start messing around with this, it will pop up this little message, you have unsaved changes. You do have to remember when you're all done with this and moving things around and adding and dropping, you do need to click save at the bottom. So I'm going to um, remove one because I know it only takes five. And if I just go ahead and add the new one, it will automatically pop off one. And I'm not sure I want it to do that. I want to decide what's in the carousel, not let the system just pop one off the beginning or the end uh, to make room for the new one. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, um, let's say, eBooks on Hoopla. I'm going to go ahead and click move my window over here. There's a remove button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. But notice it's not saved yet. Okay, it's not saved. So if we were to go back to the carousel, we'd still have the original five. But I'm going to go ahead and add in my test slider. This is another autofill. So as soon as I start typing test, we'll grab it from there. Add item. Click that. And I can move that around now. So now it's, I could make it first if I wanted to. And again, I have to click save. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and click save. And I'm going to go back to home. And there it is right away because I put it first. And I'm going to drop down my recording window a little bit. And you can see there's still five, but now one of the five is the test slider. So that is an introduction to uh, adding sliders to your carousel. And remember, there's two steps. You have to first create the slider, and then you have to add it to the queue. Thanks for listening.